All righty, you guys can totally have a seat. Put your dog in a down, get comfortable. We're done with group class. We're just gonna kind of do some Q&A. If anybody does want on the spot help, we'll bring you up. But if you don't want it, I'm not gonna force it on you. So for the most part, you guys do incredible. Like you guys are able to control your dogs. There's a lot of dogs here. It should be a very proud moment that you guys can survive a group class with this many dogs. Most people do group classes and it's just puppies and they're just teaching basics. You guys have problem dogs typically with the behavior issue or a challenge. 50% of you came here today with, my dog's doing worse, I need help, my dog, this one's being a pain, I'm having a problem. So the fact that you could start off group class with a problem and we could have a picnic right now. I could pop some champagne, we'll get some mimosas go. This is nice, so it does sound lovely, I'd really like it. So as the weather's getting nicer, the reason that it's so important to make sure that you're doing stuff at your house to keep the results is because I wanna start doing more fun, more epic group classes. Holly tags me and stuff all the time and I'm just like, I wanna do that, we need to do that. She said, you know, I think maybe we could uh, do some paddle boarding. So I'm gonna be offering a group class paddle boarding uh, day and we're gonna go to either Newport Back Bay or the Huntington Harbor. Might be like 100 or 200 bucks per person to rent the paddle board. I'm gonna get a group discount, but we're gonna put the dogs on paddle boards and we're gonna go in the harbor and we're gonna have some fun with these dogs and do a paddle boarding group class. I'd love to see if you could get the dog off of your paddle board, send it to place on the beach or on a rock, or if they get off of the paddle board, tell them to come. The e-collars are waterproof and they go three quarters of a mile. But I'd love to do stuff like that. We have a pack walk on May 19th. You cannot rent out Sandy's. It's not possible. They said, even though you're a big deal, Dylan, we cannot rent you out Sandy's. I said, well, we're coming with a ton of dog owners. So, you know, hopefully they'll give us some spots. But we're gonna have lunch after the pack walk on May 19th on Sunday. So we're gonna walk from the Huntington Dog Beach to the pier and then get lunch underneath where Sandy's is, right by that little patio. They're dog friendly. You have to pay for your own drinks and food, but come, it's gonna be fun. The more we can do as a community, the better. And I know a lot of you wanna take your dogs out to brunch, so this is a great uh, place to practice. We're also going to be, um, I don't know if it'll be next Saturday here, and we'll add a, uh, an extra hour to it, but I wanna start doing two hour group classes so we could do a little bit more. Cause for me right now, it's like, all right, we're just getting going. We could do a little bit more. So what I'm thinking is next Saturday, we're gonna plan to go to Park Bench Cafe and we'll do a, a little brunch lunch over there. And that way we can practice for the following day, I think, I'm pretty sure that's how it's gonna work out. Being out in the real world is really, really good. When's your birthday? My birthday is May 20th. So it's the Monday after the uh, pack walk. Turned 33 finally. Um, so any questions before I kind of go back to some announcements and stuff like that, is there anything you guys have a question about or need help with? Anything, Holly? She keeps notes. She's got a list of stuff ready to go. So if you guys have questions, write them down throughout the week. I'll answer them. There isn't a single question you're gonna answer me that'll go, I have to get back to you on that one. You're gonna get it immediately. I can't help myself. So just ask the questions. I'm here to help you guys. So for a few weeks ago, we were working on a state of, letting your dogs have a, be in a state of observation. What percent of time when we're out training and working with them should we have them be in a state of observation? Okay, so her question is, you want your dog to be in a state of observation instead of reactivity, right? So how long should they be in a state of observation versus being able to be reactive or just being able to be a dog? Well, just being a dog or, like, I walk a lot. I do activities with her a lot. I don't just stop and sit and allow her to observe. So, what percentage, what percentage of the time do I need training to, of training should be in observation versus being on plays? So, so for instance, Holly does two a days. Like she's prepping for a, a, you know, like a 5K marathon. So she does two a days with her dog. I would say if you wanted, your morning routine could be less about exercise and more about coming here and sitting here like this for an hour. 
if you can sit here, drink your coffee, make your morning phone calls, and just hang out and watch everybody walk past, and you're just like, this is wonderful. If you guys just come here and do this for an hour and keep your dogs calm and let them see that nothing's going to hurt them, that's that good state of observation. That's part one. Part two is, now let's use the obedience practically. Let me put the dog on place and walk away now. Let's kick it up a notch. So it's just kind of, are you doing something proactive with your dog or are we teaching the dog about distance, duration, distraction? It goes back to the three Ds, right? Distance, distraction, and duration. That's how we test the place command. So first, hang out with your dog and then get away from your dog. Separate the magnet, right? Like we've gone over before and then create more distance, then add the time. Some of you may not think we're doing anything when I say put your dog in a sit and let's just hang out for a minute, but the ones who notice that their dogs react, even with five minutes of being told to stand still, well now you know what your dog can do with just five minutes. We want to build it to 10, 15, 20. I tell you guys a lot that I'd love you to be able to put the dog on place and I'd like you to be able to take a shower, leave the room, go out to your car and unload the groceries, get the grill going and make some burgers while the dog's in on place, order pizza and pay for it and not have the dog react. I went to a lesson this morning at 9 a.m. with a two-year-old boxer that's very reactive because the kids run in and out of the house nonstop constantly crazy. By the time we were done, the dog was sleeping on place like the happiest puppy in the world. I said, if the doorbell rings right now, isn't it an inconvenience to the dog that it has to get up in a state of panic and start reacting? The dog's calm. It's finally relaxing because the kids went to baseball. I get to relax. I'm off duty. We want the dog to be less inconvenienced by our routine. If my dog knows that I have to get up and I gotta go change the, the oven or I gotta get the laundry or I gotta go, oh, I gotta do, my dog shouldn't react to me going, oh, I gotta do something. That's me panicking or reacting. The dog should go, yeah, I, I don't care. I can't help him. I can't pay for the pizza. I can't open the door. He's got this. A dog who knows that their owner has this is a very calm, confident dog, and that's how it is. My mom's got dinner made, dinner will be ready by six, I'm good, I get to play video games till it's ready. You have to know what your routine is. So it's important you guys are doing stuff in your home. Any other questions, does that kind of answer yours? Anybody else? I don't wanna keep putting Holly on the spot. Any other questions? Yeah? Every time we move, he has to move with us. He's very so his question actually is going to affect a few people here today a lot of people here were unable to take the 30 steps away from their dog right there is that codependency the where are you going mom I have to come what we recommend is a a back tie so that way your dog can't keep getting to you and there has to be some type of you know, forced to stop it, right? So I'd recommend maybe going to a park, back tying both of the dogs and just walking around and seeing how they react to not being able to get to you and just reassure them, just lay down. I'm just taking a phone call down. Not a big deal, just lay down, you're fine. I'll tell you when we're leaving. I'm not going to just leave you at the park, we're fine. Down. But that way you don't have to deal with holding the leash and the dog keeps coming to you. Um, yeah, I mean, that's what I would also recommend. The other thing is place. You have to reinforce it inside the house. If you guys let your dogs get away with certain stuff inside the house, it'll happen when you're here at group class. So anyone who's having challenges here at group class, one, don't be discouraged, keep coming but know that there's a few things that we need to tweak inside your home to help you help your dog have an easier time. So, go, yeah. Yeah, because Brandon, she'll do it here. I can walk away from her here at home. She'll just keep getting up. So should I do the tie back in the house? Yeah, you can tie it to a uh, bench or something. So she brings the other perspective. Yeah, My dog is great at group class. 
but at home my dog is horrible. That's like the children who are great when they're in school, but then they go home and it's like a mess. They don't clean the room. Their parents let them get away with whatever. And it's like, well, he's horrible to his parents, but he's, everyone loves him. So you're gonna see that dynamic. So for me, it's just, if the dog's horrible inside the house, it means he has too much freedom, too much affection, too much opportunity to feel entitled, right? It's too much freedom to, I run this house. You're not gonna tell me what to do. And then when you do try to tell me what to do, now I'm gonna be stubborn. As, how many people say their dog's stubborn? Or have said that about their dog? If you say that your dog is stubborn, it just means they have too much freedom and they get too much affection. The thing about her though is she's, she's actually pretty good in the house. She, oh, you know, like when you met her, she always wants to hide. So it's not like she does bad things in the house, but, but she always wants to hide and she doesn't want the place. She wants to go walk. I love you right now. So if a dog wants to hide, that's like a child that spends a lot of time in their bedroom playing video games. Right? My kid's in his bedroom all the time. My kid's always hiding up in his bedroom. He doesn't even eat dinner with us. He just goes to the fridge later, he's antisocial. He's doing his own thing. I don't want my kid going to hide in his bedroom because he doesn't want to be part of the family. You're going to be part of the family. I remember family TV time. I remember watching Steve Urkel with my fa family matters because it does, right? So all I want is your dog not to play Fortnite in its bedroom or hide under the the TV or the closet. But could I just have a dog that this is she's not going to change? No. Okay. You may not change. But she's The she's, dog can change if I can help you a little bit. I mean that that's all it is. If I can give you 10% She's my other little dog. She's so like different that. than any other dog I've ever had. She doesn't want really this, this right here is shocking to me that her paws on me. Doesn't but that's cute. The dog's like, hey, well, I want you. She doesn't want to sit by me. She won't sleep with me. She won't get on the sofa with me. She's, she's like a cat. So, do you mind that I'm being like open? No, I don't care. Okay, so if you're shocked that the dog isn't loving on you and you know that the dog's shaking and scared, the times that you do give it love, you're positively reinforcing. Well, I do know that. I don't do that. Like okay. she, if she's shaking or scared, I know that I just let her go through it. What do you do when that happens? What I do, uh, let's say she's hiding right now in your house. What happens in that moment? I just let her do it. Okay. I'm an alcoholic. You, I'm living with you. You mean so much under the bed that I should pull her out? All day long, put a six foot leash on and invite the dog out. Just like a depressed person that's in the room, maybe you need the friend to say, come on. Come on, let's go. Come on, come hang out with me and my friends. So, uh, like I just figured, you know, like when I, you know, she, just, she always wants to be behind something or under something. So if I you're hiding in your room, I can't let you stay there. I have to help so you when out. Bring her out. Bring her out. Just literally grab this leash, just like I did, and she was scared. And I don't want to do it because she's actually doing really good. Yeah. But just grab the leash if you're in the chair and come on, let's go and help the dog. If it protests, raise your energy levels. Come on, let's go, get out of there. Stop being depressed, let's go out, let's get food. Come on, you're a fun person, let's go. I have to get you out. Or you've got friends that go, well, you're depressed, stay depressed, I got other things to worry about. I'm the type of person, I'm gonna help you work through the depression. So for me, we're either giving the love and if you're not, then that's great. Now it's, I just have to acknowledge the dog's hiding. I don't want you in your room. I don't want you doing those things. So. You're, uh, usually you guys are 5% off. Most of you guys are about 95% accurate with what you should do. The 5% knowledge gap, it kills you. I'm telling you right now, it's a lot. It's a lot. So just know that that little 5%, that's what I wanna find so I can help you because you're doing so much right. And then that gets frustrated when you're doing so many things and then you're still not getting it. It's never the dog. That dog is 100% trainable and can live a better life. The same way if you were like, you could get out of that funk. It might take you a week or two, but I'm gonna get you out of that funk. Right, you just have to find the right person, I think. Any other questions? Anything like that? I'm gonna hang around for a little bit if you guys wanna come and ask anything in private, uh, or if you just wanna hang around for a little bit, obviously. Stand, you want the dog to just completely stand and not go? Back. Okay. The um, easiest trick is get another leash 
wrap it around like you're putting a, a, a slip lead on your dog's belly. And that way you can literally hold the leash here and you can hold the leash here and then you can tell the dog to stand. And that way you can control this back half. Okay. You get that on camera, that little But yeah, you have to control it, otherwise the dog can go, I'm gonna do it, but you can't control me and it's I have two different things. This is a great video by the way. I'm literally in the middle of a circle doing these sports motions. 